Hey everyone, this year I'm doing a series of public discussions on uh, the future of the internet and society and some of the big issues around that. And um, today I'm here with Yuval Noah Harari, uh, a great historian and uh, best-selling author of, of a number of books. Uh, his first book, Sapiens, A, a Brief History of Humankind, uh, kind of chronicled and did an analysis uh, going from the early days of hunter-gatherer society to now how our civilization is organized. And uh, your next two books, The uh, Homo Deus, A Brief History of Tomorrow and 21 Lessons for the 21st Century, uh, actually tackle important issues of technology uh, and the future. And, uh, and that's, uh, I think, a lot of what we'll talk about today. Mm -hmm. But, you know, most historians, um, you know, only t tackle and, and, um, and analyze the past. But, yeah. you know, but a lot of the work that you've done has had uh, really interesting um, insights and, and raised important questions for the future. So I'm really glad to have an opportunity to, to talk with you today. So you've all, thank you for, for joining uh, for, for this conversation. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I think that if historians and philosophers cannot engage with the current questions of technology and the future of humanity, then we aren't doing our jobs. And we are not just supposed to chronicle events, you know, centuries ago, all the people that lived in the past are dead. They don't care. The question is what happens to us and mm -hmm. to the, ch the people in the future. Yeah. All right, so all the questions that you've outlined, where, where should we start here? I and mean, I think one of the big topics that we've talked about is around um, you know, this dualism around whether uh, with all of the technology and progress that has been made, um, are, are people coming together and are we becoming more unified? Um, or um, you know, is our, is our world becoming more fragmented? Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm curious to, to start off by how, how you're thinking about that. And I mean, that's mm. probably a, a, a big area. We could probably spend most of the time on, on that topic. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the, at the long span of history, then it's obvious that humanity is becoming more and more connected. Um, if thousands of years ago, planet Earth was actually a galaxy of a lot of isolated worlds mm -hmm. with almost no connection between them, so gradually, people came together and became more and more connected until we reach today when the entire world, for the first time, is a single historical, economic, and, and cultural unit. But connectivity doesn't necessarily mean harmony. The people we fight most often are our own family members and, and neighbors and friends. So um, it, it's really a question of are we talking about Connecting people, or are we talking about harmonizing people? Mm -hmm. uh, connecting people can lead to a lot of conflicts. And when you look at the world today, you see this duality, um, for example, in, 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 the, in, the, in the rise of walls, which we talked a lot about earlier when, when, when we met, yeah. which for me is something that I just can't figure out what, what is happening, mm -hmm. because you have all this you know, new connecting technology and the internet and virtual realities and social networks. And, and then the most, one of the top political issues becomes building walls. And not just, you know, cyber walls or firewalls, building stone walls. Like the most stone age technology is suddenly the most advanced technology. So one, how to make sense of this world, which is more connected than ever, but at the same time is building more walls than ever before? Yeah, well, I think one of the interesting questions is around whether there's actually so much of a conflict between these ideas of people becoming more connected um, and uh, this fragmentation that you, that you talk about. I mean, it, it, one of the things that it seems to me is that we, in the 21st century, in order to address the biggest opportunities and challenges that humanity has, right? So I think it's both opportunities, spreading prosperity, spreading peace, um, scientific progress, um, as well as some of the big challenges, right? Addressing climate change, um, making sure that, um, you know, on the flip side, that diseases don't spread and there aren't epidemics and, and things like that. We, we really need to be able to come together um, and, and have the world be more connected. But at the same time, that only works if, um, if we as, as individuals have our economic and, um, and social and, and spiritual needs met. And you know, so one way to think about this is in terms of um, fragmentation, mm -hmm. uh, but another way to think about it is in terms of 
uh, personalization, right? And you know, you know, I just think about, you know, when I was growing up, um, you know, one of the big things that I think that the internet enables is is for people to um, connect with groups of people who who share their real uh, values and interests. And it wasn't always like this, right? Before the internet, you were really tied to uh, your physical location. Uh, and and I, I just think about how, how when I was growing up, um, you know, I grew up in a town of about 10,000 people. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there were, there were only, um, you know, so many different clubs or activities that you could do. So I grew up, like a lot of the other kids, um, playing Little League baseball. And, and you know, I, I, I kind of think about this in retrospect. It's like, I'm not really into baseball. I'm not really an athlete. So why did I play um, Little League? when, you know, my real passion was programming computers. And, you know, the, the reality was that growing up, there was no one else really in my town who was into programming computers. So I didn't have a, a peer group or a club that I could do that. It wasn't until I went to boarding school um, and then later college uh, where I actually was able to meet people who were into the same things as I am. Mm -hmm. And now I think with the internet, that's starting to change, right? And, and now um, you have the ability to not just be tethered to your physical location, but to find people who have... Um, more niche interests and, and different kind of subcultures and communities um, on the internet, which I think is a really powerful thing. But it also means that, you know, me growing up today, I wouldn't have necessarily, I probably wouldn't have played Little League. And you can think about me playing Little League as, um, you know, that, that, that could have been a unifying thing where, you know, there weren't that many things in my town. So that was a thing that brought people together. So maybe, you know, if I'm, if I was creating or if I was a part of a, of, 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 of a community online that might have been more meaningful to me, uh, getting to know real people, but around programming, which is my real interest, um, you would have said that our community growing up would have been more fragmented, right? Mm -hmm. And people wouldn't have had um, the, the same kind of sense of, 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 of um, physical community. So w when I think about these problems, I mean, one of the questions that, that I wonder is maybe you know, fragmentation and personalization or finding what you actually care about are two sides of the same coin. But the bigger challenge that I worry about is whether there are a number of people who are just left behind in the transition, um, who, you know, were people who would have played Little League but haven't now found their new community and now just feel dislocated. And, you know, maybe their primary orientation in the world um, is still um, their... The, the physical community that they're in, um, you know, or, um, or that they haven't really been able to find um, a, a community mm -hmm. of people who they're, who they're interested in. And as the world has progressed, um, you know, I think a lot of people feel, feel lost in that way. And that, that probably contributes to some of the, the feelings. That, that would be my, my hypothesis, at least. I mean, that's the social version of it. There's also the economic version around mm -hmm. globalization, which I yeah. think is as important. But, but, but I'm curious what, what, you, what you think about that. About the social issue, well, online, co online communities can be a wonderful thing, but they are still incapable of replacing physical communities because there are still so many that's things that's that true. you can that's only true. do with your, uh, in, 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 with your body mm -hmm. and with your physical friends. And you can travel with your mind throughout the world, but, but not with your body. And um, th there is a huge question about the cost and benefits there. Mm -hmm. And also... The, the ability of people to just escape yeah. things they don't like in online communities, but you can't do it in, in real offline communities. I mean, you can unfriend your Facebook friends, mm -hmm. but you can't unneighbor your neighbors. You're, they are still there. Yeah. I mean, you can take yourself and move to another country if you, if, if you have the means, but most people can't. So part of the, of the logic of traditional communities was that you must learn how to get along with people you don't like, necessarily, maybe. Uh, and you must develop social mechanisms how to do that. Mm -hmm. And with online communities, I mean, and, and they have done some really wonderful things for, 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 for people, but also they kind of um, don't give us the experience of, of, of doing these difficult but important yeah. things. Yeah, and, and I definitely don't mean to state that um, that online communities can can replace everything that a physical community did. Mm -hmm. the, the most meaningful online communities that we see 
are ones that span online and offline, that bring people together. Uh, maybe the, the original organization might be online, but, mm -hmm. um, but people are coming together um, physically because that's, that ultimately is really important for relationships and, and for, because I mean, we're physical beings, mm -hmm. right? So, um, so whether it's, you know, there are, there are lots of examples around whether it's an interest community where people, you know, care about running, but they also care about cleaning up the environment. So a group of people organize on, online and then they, they um, you know, every week go for a run along a beach or through a town and clean up garbage. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's like a, a physical thing. I mean, we, we hear um, about communities where, you know, people, um, if, you're, if you're in a profession, um, you know, maybe the military or maybe something else where you have to move around a lot, um, people uh, form these communities of, of um, you know, military families or, mm. or families of, of um, you know, groups that, that travel around. And you know, the first thing they do when they go to a new city is they, they find that community and then that's how they get integrated into, um, into the, local, mm -hmm. uh, the local physical community too. So th that's, that's obviously a, a super important uh, part of this that I, that I don't mean to, to, to understand. Yeah, and then the, the question, you know, the practical question for also a, a service provider like Facebook is what is the goal? I mean, mm -hmm. are we trying to connect people so ultimately they will leave the screens and go and play football or pick up garbage? Or are we trying to keep them as long as possible on the screens? And there is yeah. a, 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 a conflict of interest there. Yeah. I mean, you could have, 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 I mean, one model would be we want people to stay as little as possible online. Mm -hmm. We just need them to stay there the, the shortest time necessary to form the connection, which will, they will then go and mm -hmm. do something in the outside world. Yeah. And that's one of the key questions, I think, about what the internet is doing to people, whether it's connecting them or fragmenting society. Yeah, and, and I think your, your point is right. I mean, we basically went, we've made this big shift in our systems to make sure that they're optimized for meaningful social interactions, which of course the most meaningful interactions that you can have are physical offline interactions. And mm -hmm. there's always this question when you're building a, a uh, service of, of how you measure the, the different thing that you're trying to optimize for. So, you know, it's a lot easier for us to measure um, if people are interacting or messaging online than if you're having a, a meaningful mm -hmm. connection physically. Um, but there are ways to get at that. I mean, you can ask people questions about wh what the most meaningful things that they did. You can't ask, you know, all you know, two billion people, but you can have a, a statistical subsample of that, mm -hmm. and I'm um, have people come in and 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 tell you, okay, what are the most meaningful things that I was able to do um, today, and how many of them were enabled by me, um, you know, connecting with people online, or how much of it was me connecting with someone physically, maybe around the dinner table um, with content or something that I learned online or saw. Um, so so that that is definitely a really important part of it. 